Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And heavyweight news in brief it is today, starting with promoter Frank Warren, confirming that the WBO title will not be on the line when his fighter Tyson Fury faces German Tom Schwartz this weekend in Las Vegas. Fury stated to media this week that the belt, which Andy Ruiz Jr. only just won from Anthony Joshua, might in fact be on the line, citing it was highly doable and that he had inside information on the situation. But Warren has squashed the rumour that Fury started, saying, that's just Tyson playing. Schwartz and Fury are currently ranked second and third in the WBO rankings respectively, so this fight will enhance the winner's chances of becoming the mandatory challenger or being ordered to be part of a final eliminator. The winner of the Andy Ruiz Jr. and Anthony Joshua rematch will be required to face the as-yet-to-be-confirmed WBO mandatory challenger immediately after that fight. But getting back to uh, Tyson Fury and Tom Schwartz with the build-up to their fight, the pair went face-to-face -face for the first time at the official Fight Week press conference, which saw Tyson Fury injecting his usual flair and led to a pose-off between him and his German opponent. As you can see here on screen, here's a couple of different shots. For any other heavyweight, it might have been unusual, but not for Fury, who was at his entertaining best ahead of his first fight of his new co-promotional deal with ESPN and Top Rank. Fury believes that the American people have embraced him, saying, I feel like the crowd has warmed to me. Everyone has been very welcoming. The American people, all different types of people, have been coming up to me. People from all over the world here in Vegas, people who don't speak English, people who don't even watch boxing. It's quite humbling, to be honest. I believe the fight with Wilder only helped my profile here in the United States. And here we are again, only a few days away from the biggest fight of my life. And Tom Schwartz says training for this fight was very good. We had hundreds of sparring partners to prepare for this big fight. My time is now. And on adding Roberto Norris to his corner, Schwartz said, he makes me train harder and that has made me a stronger fighter. I've also learned new boxing skills with him. He has taught me the American style. The eyes of the world will be on Las Vegas this Saturday night and for that I'm very honoured and excited. It will be a great fight and I'm coming to win and shock the world. Meanwhile, Frank Warren says Tyson Fury seems to be getting stronger and fitter every day. He says to get where he has after just three fights is a testament to the character of the man, and he has almost demonstrated to everyone what can be achieved from almost the point of no return. He says the way he completely flummoxed the WBC world champion Deontay Wilder after just two relatively low-key comeback fights was remarkable, and he deserves this opportunity to hone himself into even finer conditions before the rematch. Exporting Tyson to Las Vegas for this fight has always been about marketing and creating awareness of his personality to a wider American audience. It's part of a bigger plan by his US broadcaster ESPN to generate huge exposure of his talents and subsequently maximize the financial return for him when it comes to fighting Wilder again. On paper, he is obviously a big favorite as the lineal champion and now restored to number one in the Ring Magazine heavyweight rankings, something I've always believed anyway. Tyson cannot afford to take the threat of the young, unbeaten German lightly. Tom Schwartz may not have mixed it in Tyson Fury's class before, but this is his golden ticket and he will be looking to cash it in. Anything can happen in this game, as we were reminded of last week. Frank Warren statements. Heavyweights Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder have made the Forbes 2019 highest paid athlete list, with Joshua landing at 13th spot with $55 million in earnings in the past year, Wilder at number 56 with $30.5 million. The only other boxer on the list was Canelo Alvarez at number 4 spot with over $90 million. Deontay Wilder recently stated he would soon become the highest paid athlete on the planet, and making the list is a good start, but there is some catching up to do to number one, Lionel Messi, with his $127 million in earnings in the past year. 
Speculation is mounting that faded former world title challenger Alex Leopai will be named as Joseph Parker's opponent for his June 29th fight date in Providence, Rhode Island. Eric Molina had originally been discussed as Parker's next opponent, and Parker himself has been using the Parker Molina hashtag in recent days. New Zealand media have reported that Molina has not signed the contract to fight Parker, with some outlets citing his purse as the reason. Alex Leopai's trainer confirmed to News Hub that he was expecting to receive a contract from Matchroom Boxing to step in and fight Parker. But Parker's manager David Higgins denied the Molina fight was off the table, but wouldn't confirm nor deny the potential of a showdown with Leopai. Just on Molina, many of you will know that he is currently on a drug ban from UK anti-doping, stemming from a failed doping test after his fight with Anthony Joshua. His ban does not expire until October. So I asked UCAD, in light of him potentially facing Joseph Parker, what, if any, measures could it take to prevent Molina being licensed in Rhode Island? As UCAD had previously asserted, he was banned from all sport, and that was a blanket ban. So UCAD's legal department examined the issue, and a spokesperson responded to my query saying, Governance of pro boxing is unusual and anti-doping is enforced in different ways in different jurisdictions. What this means is that a pro boxer banned by UCAD under the BBBOC ADR will not always be banned from participation in boxing outside of the UK. There will be circumstances where they are free to compete. Rest assured, UCAD investigates fully any suggestion that athletes subject to bans are participating in sport in contravention of those bans. And where appropriate, UCAD takes all necessary steps to ensure that the terms of the bans are enforced. I think the simple translation here is that it's unlikely UCAD can enforce a ban outside of the UK. Premier Boxing Champions has announced that Robert Hellenius will face Gerald Washington in a 10-round fight on the Jamal James vs Antonio DeMarco card in Minneapolis on July 13th. Washington is coming off a second-round stoppage in January against Adam Kovnatsky, and he has lost three of his past four fights, while for Hellenius, he is coming off a brutal knockout win over Erkin Tepper in September 2018. He's won six of his past seven fights. And the last time that he lost was to Dillian White back in 2017 in a fight which he showed little ambition after injuring his right hand early in the fight. It will be Hellenius's first fight in the United States and based on form, he should go in the favourite. Although it has the potential to be close if Washington comes in with the right strategy. But if Washington doesn't move his head, as was the case against uh, Adam Kovnatsky, Hellenius could well knock him out. Warriors Boxing and Ural Boxing promotions have signed undefeated Cuban heavyweight Frank Sanchez Foray to a co-promotional contract. 26-year-old Sanchez Foray, who is currently 11-0 with 9 KOs, was a decorated amateur with over 200 wins and just 6 losses. He turned pro in 2017 and had 10 fights alone in 2018. Sanchez Foray says, I'm very happy with my new team. I will focus everything on becoming a world champion. A spokesperson for Warriors Boxing, Luis de Cuba, says, With the heavyweights the way they are, he could beat anyone out there right now. His trainer, Eric Castanos, says Frank has an incredible pedigree, determination and work ethic. He is capable of competing with any world champion today. Within 12 months, no one will touch him. While Tyson Fury's fight this weekend is attracting its fair share of heavyweight headlines this week, there's a number of prospect and fringe contenders in action elsewhere. Friday night, the talented American prospect Damani Rock, who's currently 15-0, will face journeyman Raymond Oching in Jacksonville, Florida. On Saturday in Quebec, Canada, Simon Keane will look to revenge his upset loss to Dylan Carmen. Both Keane and Carmen have had one fight since they fought in October 2018, with Keane bouncing back from a sole defeat against an Argentinian journeyman, while Carmen was stopped in the first round in February by rising Russian prospect Yevgeny Romanov. It's a classic case of revenge or repeat. And Keane goes into the fight knowing if he gets careless, Carmen has the ability to capitalise and hurt him as he did in the first fight, before ultimately stopping Keane. 
Elsewhere, 11-0 prospect Alexander Zarkozy, the 6'9 prospect, will be back in action in Ukraine against a 7-7 seven and seven journeyman. And 12-0 Yevgeny Romanov will face the 9-2 Argentinian Ariel Esteban Bracamonte in Ekaterinburg, Russia this weekend. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.